Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific look at a car from Project Gotham 4 in particular and this is nowhere near as quick as most of the vehicles that we would typically cover. It's much much lower down the food chain, right down in class F. Which could seem to be a little bit harsh <laughs> considering how good this car is, how iconic it is in real life and also how ridiculously expensive these cars are if you actually try to buy one in the real world when you very rarely see them for sale because they didn't really make a huge amount of them in the first place. I believe if memory serves there are actually less of these in the world than there are SLR McLarens from Mercedes which is kind of crazy. But one of the main reasons why I wanted to review this car in particular, the Alfa Romeo SZ, is because it's always been one of my absolute favourite Alfa Romeos, but it's one which I don't talk about much. And the reason why I don't talk about it that much is because there are so few games that actually feature it. Gran Turismo, for instance, has never had this car. Forza has only recently started to feature it. Stuff like Test Drive Unlimited, which I would have personally assumed probably would have a car like this, never has. Project Gotham is one of the rare places where you could get it pretty much earlier than anywhere else, at least as far as I can think of. There's probably some obscure game or something that I haven't thought of where you could find it, but for the most part, not really. Now for those who are unfamiliar with the car, it wasn't exactly well received by the press in particular, they nicknamed it the Monster, and you can understand why it's kind of oddly proportioned in some ways, but I've always found this to be a great looking car. And although it is a front-engine, rear-wheel drive, 207 horsepower sports car, definitely, in both hardtop and open-top forms, the open-top is even rarer, called the RZ, or Roadster Z, this one, it's just such a cool car to me, and it's always looked, at least to me, like it should have been a Group B car, like it needed about 220 horsepower with all-wheel drive and a turbo. To me, it would have been a fantastic rival to the Audi Quattro, like Italy's answer to that car, which of course the Lancia Delta basically is, but I think this would have been a pretty cool Group B Alfa Romeo, or at least that kind of vibe, but maybe that's just me. What you actually get, though, is a very rare, very exclusive, exotic sports car. And although it doesn't have supercar levels of performance, with, of course, 207 horsepower, it certainly isn't bad. Now, as far as its performance goes in Project Gotham 4, of course, being in such a low category, it's not going to have crazy numbers. First of all, for the acceleration, for instance, they give it a 2, which <laughs> isn't very good. Now, is it justified in having that? Well, it's all relative, isn't it? You have to compare it to the other vehicles in the game, so with that in mind, sure, you can give it a 2. Personally, I might bump it up to a 3 because it's pretty decent, but I can understand why they would give it 2, certainly when other vehicles don't necessarily have a full 10 that arguably deserve it. As far as braking, they give it a 4. That's fair enough for the most part. Again, I might bump it up to a 5, but a 4 seems pretty accurate. As far as grip and drifting, they give it a 4 and a 3, respectively. The 4 for grip seems pretty fair. The 3 for drifting as well is pretty fair. It's actually quite a grippy little car, which again could indicate that the grip could do with being a little bit higher, maybe another 5 for me. I feel right with the 3 for drifting, that's about accurate for this one. And as far as top end speed, they give it a 3, which it's a little bit incongruent compared to the 2 for acceleration. I would say it's pretty evenly matched as far as its acceleration and top speed for its respective power and class. But overall, yeah, with a car like this, not many people are going to care. It's very early on in the game, you can drive it relatively quickly if memory serves, and it's a, a low-level car, so of course people aren't going to have the same kind of fandom as for something like a Koenigsegg or a Lambo or a Ferrari. Most people won't care about a car like this because in a game that features so many exotics, both cars and bikes, it's very easy to gloss over the lower level machines. And even for me as a reviewer, I certainly have vehicles in the game, or in any driving game for that matter, which I don't use that often, of course. But for me, this is such a special car that even if you don't necessarily love it, it kind of always catches your attention, because as I mentioned earlier, it's such a unicorn. As far as games go, it's just not featured that often at all, and when it is, it just feels like this special occasion, seeing this ultra-rare exotic Alfa Romeo 
which in the real world, in a funny sort of way, didn't necessarily have performance that matched up to its extreme appearance. It certainly catches your eye. In terms of performance, it's not bad. As I said, just over 200 horsepower. The weight is reasonable, but not outstanding. The performance itself is okay. 0-60, I believe, is around 7 seconds, that kind of region. Which, again, it's not necessarily anything to write home about, but it was of its time. And although it was ultra rare, it certainly made an impact. It's one of the most iconic and oddball and simultaneously desirable Alfa Romeos ever built. And for me, even though I don't use it that often in Project Gotham or Forza or pretty much any game that does have it, it's still nice to have it as an option. It's such a cool car to me, and it's one which is very easy to overlook, arguably even more so in a game like Project Gotham than in something like Forza where you have a lot of slower cars. So for me personally, this is one of those occasions where this video, for instance, will probably get less views than most of my other Project Gotham reviews, and that's fine, because of course it's going to get less. It's a slower car, a car which many people don't care about or don't remember that often, but for me, it's a nice, cool car to have in the game, slow or otherwise. It's just a nice vehicle. But that's it for this pick overall. It's certainly a car that's worth checking out for Group F. It's a good all-rounder. It's dependable. It's pretty quick for its level, for its power. The handling is good. You can drift it if you want to, but it's not ideal for that. And it's well proportioned. It's small, chunky, feels like this little ball of power, which again kind of leans into what I said about it sort of feeling like a rally car. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.